What up, me familia? Welcome back. Another fixture form. If you want to get involved, we need three reps at 70%. Squat, bench, deadlift, overhead, any lift you want. Email it to ask, M-I-K-K-E, at gmail.com. And if you get chosen, you'll be involved. We got some deadlifts today. My friend here, the most common mistake in deadlifts. Form overall is decent. Uh, but what we're doing here is we're squatting the weight up. So what we need to do is try to get our hips a bit higher. Uh, and I know people say lower hips, you get more legs involved. That is fine and dandy, but it's going to be dependent on how you're built. Right now, your knees are in the way of the bar path. You have no tension in your hamstrings or glutes. So what we want to do is hip hinge the weight up, deadlift the weight up, pull the weight up, do anything you want with the weight up, but we don't want to squat the weight up. So we, what uh, we're aiming for is a little bit higher hip position. You drop that chin a little bit, chest will be a little bit more towards the ground, and then you're going to end up pushing those hips back a little bit more, almost thinking about pushing your hips further away from the barbell, behind you, getting your body weight behind the bar. Uh, another little thing just from this view is what I'll try to do is make sure those legs and arms are symmetrical, and I like to get my arms as close to my body as possible uh, without making it uh, restrictive or in the way uh, hitting my knees or something like that. One, it's going to allow you to flex your back nice and hard, pulling the bar into your body. Uh, number two, it's going to um, reduce the range of motion. So the closer our arms are together, uh, the closer they are to shoulder width. Um, that's for both the sumo and the conventional. Uh, the less range of motion we're going to have to pull that bar, uh, the hopefully the stronger we will be over time. So my friend, um, hips a bit higher, drop that chin just a hair, pull that bar into you, Smash away. Oh, we're going sumo, fam. And yes, sumo is a real deadlift. I don't care what y'all got to say. If it was that much easier, all the world records would be broken sumo, and that's just not the case. Overall, pretty dang decent. Um, one little thing we could try to always work on is just that cue of flexing our lats as much as we can. When you have the barbell in front of you, one little thing uh, to kind of create twalk in the shoulder uh, and flex our lats harder, our upper back harder, which will, one, allow our midline to be a bit, little bit more rigid, uh, which is like our tightness. Two, uh, keep that bar close to us, even though you're doing a great job of it, um, is getting that elbow to point backwards. You see that elbow right there? It's similar to the bench press where we're turning. We're almost bending that bar um, at the wrist, at the elbow, and then hopefully uh, what that is cueing is us to actually just flex our shoulder. Here's a little bit better view. Um, really good, man. Really, really good. You do a, a really good job of getting in position, not only into position, but what's optimal position uh, for you and your body. Super solid. Uh, I dig it. Not much to fix other than uh, the tighter and harder you can flex your lats, the better off you're going to be. You can see my man right here, just as I mentioned, uh, if you can get a straight line from your shoulder to the barbell on both conventional and sumo, uh, sumo, uh, the better off we're going to be. So um, props to you, dude. It looks like you put in some work, you put in some time, uh, and you've really created the best pull uh, for your levers. And he's got all them angles, them sick angles. Uh, one little thing, now that we're going fast pace here, it looks like you're jerking on the bar. I'd like to just see you control that a little bit more. I know you have straps and you're getting in a good position, but when you're getting a little bit lazier as the reps go on, and you can see your back jerk into place, we want to get tension through our, our legs, our low back, and our glutes uh, before we're pulling. So drive those feet into the ground, Get that chest nice and high with tension. What, are you flipping me off? Come on, bro. Um, and you can just see how you're jerking on the bar. Under a heavier load, what's going to happen uh, is you're going to jerk on that bar, and it's not going to move. Hips are going to shoot up, and you're not going to be able to complete the lift. Mm, that's very, very common for both sumo and conventional pullers. Uh, depending on the federation you compete in and how strict the judging, uh, either you're not going to complete the lift or you're going to get some up-down stuff off the ground because uh, you're going to lose balance by Trying to go zero to 100 uh, rather than slowly step on the gas. Think about a nice, smooth pull, not a uh, herky-jerky um, uh, rev-off, you know. Um, here's another pull. But pretty good sumo, dude. Uh, just slow it down. Slow it down. Strength doesn't have to always be fast. You're, you're dealing with maximal loads. Um, not bad. It looks like you were going to set up a little bit low for my liking, uh, and it still might be a hair low with those hips. Uh, you can see the over curvature in your back. What we're going to try to do is pull those ribs down a little bit and flex your stomach. So uh, what we want is a straight line, a compact line um, from our shoulders to our hips, getting that as compact and, and straight and, and, and solid as we can. So big breath into your stomach, flex down in those hips a little bit. If that's just your setup to drop those hips way low, that's fine. Um, just make sure that you have that tension in your hamstrings and glutes when you're actually 
with pulling. So a hair higher, you can see you're trying to pull on the bar a little bit, uh, and it doesn't want to move uh, until those hips are in the right place anyway. So might as well uh, just try not to waste energy and get in that same spot. Uh, you could try dropping your chin a hair. It's not going to make a big difference. But see right here, I don't like you setting up with your hips in that starting position too long. Uh, one, we want to use the elasticity of our muscles a little bit as we get into place. And two, uh, it's just telling me that you're kind of squatting the weight up. So hips are ha uh, a hair higher. Uh, get some tension in that low back and glutes, uh, and you should be good to go. Overall, uh, very, very efficient, very solid. You can see rep to rep also, uh, just some inconsistencies. And what we want to try to do is make it like our golf swing. Powerlifting is a little bit like golf, where we just want to do the exact same thing over and over and over, hopefully with uh, more weight, more volume over time. But if you just get down the... Uh, um, routine of doing the exact same thing every single time from your hands to your feet placement and also your hips where sometimes your hips are in a great spot like right there and then other times you'll drop those hips way low uh, again the main thing is we just want to compact that midline from hip to shoulder as tight as we freaking can as straight as we freaking can uh, and for you my friend that's just going to be pulling those ribs down just a hair uh, we talk about cues here and there uh, people always talk about having your chest high which is fine cue uh, but it's all relative we don't want it overdone uh, first, what we got here, my friend, uh, is we're going to need to get some uh, flatter shoes. Um, the flatter the shoe, uh, the more stable you're going to be. Number two, uh-oh, we got a double. We got a couple. We got a couple deadlifts, my friends. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, I'll be able to finish uh, what I just saw there. Number two is we're going to have to tr try to get that back a little bit flatter. So think about breathing into that belt. I think about breathing underneath the belt, 360 in my stomach, my obliques, and my low back. Oh, we got the flip floppy of the couple. Uh, the other thing is having your hips a hair higher. You got a, a little bit long torso, a little bit long legs, and I can see that you're trying to pull your hips too low, and that's making that low back around a little bit. Um, Last piece is I'm not a huge fan of touch and go. I think there's a time and place for it, but I think for the majority of powerlifters, if powerlifting is your goal, um, we're going to have to have that dead stop on the ground. One, it's going to uh, help us teach speed and positioning off the ground, which is obviously important in powerlifting because the one rep max is most important. Um, and two, if even if you're not a powerlifter, uh, chances that you get pushed out of position or get sloppy doing touch and goes and kind of get that rebound or bounce off the ground is high. So the more we can control it, the better. Hubby here, or boyfriend here, uh, is doing a better job of kind of that dead stop. I'd like to see a little more control on the way down, uh, but overall really solid. My man here, I could already tell we got wrong weights. Um, so the deadlift, uh, as bro science says, you always start with 135. doesn't matter how strong or weak you are, you always start with 135, uh, which is true uh, because we're using Olympic lifting plates. And that is a certain diameter of the hole. Hmm? of the hole where the bar goes through hmm? uh, and it's also a certain height so the all deadlifts and all powerlifting regardless of federation is always going to start from the same standard height uh, and that's going to allow us to live this properly if you're using standard plates which is right here which is a smaller hole and a smaller plate hmm? a smaller hole to put the barbell through hmm? if you guys know what i'm saying give me a hmm in the comment section below um, we're going to have issues because it's almost going to be like a deficit pull. Uh, now, considering this is a deficit pull, your form's pretty solid. Uh, you can see your knees lock out a little bit before your hips, but sometimes that happens on a deficit because you have increased range of motion. Uh, a little bit too much twalk on the neck. I'd like to see you drop your chin and eye line just a bit. Hips might have to be a hair higher than you want, uh, especially when going from a deficit. Uh, deficit's a great movement to increase range of motion. Uh, to help grip strength, overall strength, um, sometimes bottom position. But what it can do for many lifters is actually uh, mess up your bottom position where your hips are going to be too low or too high uh, compared to where you would normally pull. Uh, and then when you do go to pull from the ground, um, your coordination, your movement pattern is off and your technique actually can get worse. So a deficit pull can be a great teaching tool uh, when done properly, but you have to really focus on starting in the same position on a deficit uh, than you would at ground, uh, the normal ground. And and, and for many people, that's going to mean uh, hips are going to feel and actually be a hair higher than you actually think they're going to be. Uh, because of that reduced range of motion, we don't want to squat that weight up, remember. We still want that tension in our hamstrings and glutes. Um, so it can be difficult, uh, but it can be a good teaching tool. Again, if you do dead stop and if you think about each rep um, being its own, um, each even though you're doing a set of eight, singles eight singles is a set of eight doing each one perfectly uh, i'd also try to move your grip out a little bit i know you're using that standard barbell so it might feel a little compact those plates are really close to you uh, but my number one recommendation uh, is try to get a cheap olympic barbell for you my friend overall your form is really solid but uh it's hard to tell what kind of weights you're using also uh, the standard weights again are making it the deficit so it can be done um 
But for pretty much everybody, I do recommend uh, the Olympic barbell with the bigger hole, a bigger barbell. <clears throat> but overall, I, I guess for a deficit here, your form is pretty dang solid. You're getting really nice and tight. You're flexing the biceps to let the ladies know here on YouTube what the hell is going on. All three ladies that are watching. Uh, so I got mad respect for that. It looks like you're pounding away at home. You got your office in the background doing sets of deadlifts, super set it with sets of uh, Excel sheets and accounting, which I appreciate. I appreciate the working man. Shout out to the working man. This one's for you. This bud's for you. Um, but I do... <clears throat> Uh, think you need to find a gym membership or just grab an Olympic barbell. It looks like you have your own weight set, and I know that stuff costs. Um, but if you're trying to do these things, um, one, barbells and plates kind of last forever unless you uh, mistreat them. So it would be a good investment if you're really trying to get after the deadlift. What do we got next? What do we What do we got? The slow-mo with the standard barbell. Looks like he's about to just check that through that room. Looks way too light for you to, uh, and to load up a proper amount of weight. Uh, the diameter of the bar is going to be a little bit thin, and then load a proper amount of weights. Uh, you're going to need a freaking Olympic barbell, my friend. Can we get on to the next person already? I'm here waiting. You guys are waiting. Oh, we got more weight for this guy. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I can't see uh, uh, what's happening ahead of time. <laughs> Yeah, so the hips just locking out early is a common mistake in both lifts, uh, or excuse me, the knees locking out early, and, um, both you know deficit or, or, or not deficit, and what that's just basically telling me is that you're squatting the weight up, uh, and then two, your hips are too low to begin with. Um, I know there's some talk about sumo deadlift where the knees should lock out first or the hips, and I think with the sumo, depending on how you're built, you may need to lock out the knees a little bit um, ahead of time before the hips, and that's going to uh, basically just allow for a straighter bar path and allow the knees to get out of the way of the bar path on the conventional pull, um, you know, 99% of the time, uh, you're going to need to lock the hips and knees at the same time, similar to a squat. Uh, if you aren't doing this, um, the issue will be is once you lock those knees out, a lot of your body weight and the barbell, uh, which hopefully is near a maximum when we're talking about a powerlifting meet, is going to be in front of the barbell. Uh, and you're just going to get tipped forward. You can even see it there. Obviously, the weight's light enough where his glutes and back can just finish the movement. But um, if you're handling maximal loads, even above uh, you know 85%, and your knees lock out too early, you're going to be stuck in front of the bar, uh, and it's just going to pull you forward, where you're either going to get that up-down motion, as I mentioned before, kind of with the uh, yanking, and basically all that means is in powerlifting, powerlifting standards, once the bar uh, begins to head upwards in the bench squat or dead, deadlift, it cannot go back down uh, before you complete the lift. This is a, a red light and will be a no lift in power lifting. And so when we're practicing, uh, one, just for uh, um, competition sake, obviously, but for even injury and just general form and technique, uh, you want that barbell to go in one smooth motion. If you get too much herking and jerking uh, with heavy loads, up, down type stuff, uh, the, the risk for injury goes um, way up. And same thing with this knees locking out too early is <clears throat> you get so much of that barbell ahead of you. Uh, yes, our low back is strong and yes, our low back can handle uh, a lot amount of work and uh, weight. Um, it's not just going to go straight to snap city, but over repetition and the chances do go up uh, when the, all of that load ends up in the low back because your knees uh, locked out early and again um, that's just because uh, this guy's pulling off a deficit a little bit and then the uh, range of motion gets changed uh, I'm gonna end up cutting the video right here my friends as it looks like we got the repeat I do appreciate you give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more be sure to subscribe drop in a video every other day turn on notifications so you don't miss it guys I'm solid Mike I appreciate you and we're out of here